provisions under the Bill of Rights uh, with respect to participation of the people, how the people are supposed to engage. And the reality is the people of Kenya have come to an awakening that, hey, these are our rights. We gave them to ourselves. And it is upon ourselves to enjoy them. And this realization is simply because the people that have been entrusted with ascertaining the protections of these rights have failed. You look at the duty of the police under Article 244, they have to uphold constitutional standards of human rights, but is that what they do? You know, when buddies are walking with water bottles and their iPhones and simply trying to talk about what their rights are and you tear gas them, it, it's very unfortunate, you know? Advocates trying to uphold the right to fair trial, going to police stations to represent people who, mind you, have been unlawfully arrested. Then you hear gas, these lawyers, not caring for their health, not caring for their duty to the people. Then what, what, what kind of setup are you trying to put in place? We find ourselves in a situation where we stand at the risk of those in positions of power, choosing when to suspend the constitution and choosing when to adhere to it when it suits them. And therefore, it is a moment of awakening where we as a people of Kenya need to come together. We need to stand up to all the ills that have characterized our country historically and since the promulgation of the new constitution. And we need to appreciate that we have a wonderful constitution and it is upon us to make it work for ourselves because our political leaders have not just failed, they have refused to implement it. Thanks so much, Alice. Nadia, just walk us through how this entire ODL experience has really changed in terms of how now you view life and everything else. My life has changed so drastically in the span of one month, I cannot even tell you. Um, as Billy said, we need a lot of psychosocial support. The anxiety, constantly having to look over your shoulder, constantly being scared that people are out to get you. I also haven't stayed in my house for more than two days at a go since this thing started. This jumping from relative to relative, friend to friend. I stayed with my partner also for some time. So <laughs> it's crazy. As I, as I was telling the story right now, I could feel like a panic attack was coming on because as I recount those events in my head, I feel like I'm back there. I feel like I'm going through that again. So. Really? How is it for you? It's not simple because you walk around, everybody knows you from the news that you're missing. Everybody wants to hear your side of the story. But at the same time, you're scared because, first of all, I didn't see those guys. I didn't see any of their faces. So in a way, I can't trust anyone. I'm a bit skeptic. And now my life is in normal because my phone has to be constantly on flight Because I'm getting out of all relatives. They, are, they want to know how I am. So I always reach out to my mom so that she can at least tell them that I'm okay. But at the moment, I'm moving around constantly from house to house because I don't want to be found in my house again alone. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Honest from you and from the Law Society of Kenya, perhaps are you looking at ways in which we can be able to get justice for uh, people like Nadia and Billy? Well, perhaps it, I wouldn't want to claim to speak for the Law Society of Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, but I would uh, have to admit that it is important uh, that those who are capable and are in positions to intervene do intervene. And of course, I appreciate um, my relationship with the, the, the Law Society and being a victim myself. Uh, I think it is in order that uh, the Law Society takes an active uh, position in representing these people and you know, finding redress. Um, because as they've shared, uh, the experiences were not easy. Um, the violations of constitutional rights, and there must be repressions. That is what we must agree as a people, we must agree as a society. There must be repressions, there must be consequences. So I would have to say that uh, all the things that we have experienced should not go in vain. Um, for instance, the day I was convinced the day I knew hot water tastes good. I ordinarily do not take hot water, but it was the only thing on offer. Yeah? Uh, that was the day I was reminded of how it feels to be work coffee at Kisogo. I have not been hit on the backside of my head since I was nine years old, and that's quite some time back. But those reminders came in, and, and it was a hard experience. But we have capacity, we have numbers, we have capability, we have courts that are not just prepared, but are required to make sure that justice is served. And I do believe that all the partners who have taken part in putting this together, the Citizen Assembly, will work as well to ensure that the necessary reparations are found for all the victims and all the families of those who lost their lives. Thank you so much, Ernest. I don't know if the people here have any questions to our panelists. Uh, if we have uh, perhaps the mic going around. Uh, if you have any questions, just raise up your hand so that we can have an interactive engagement uh, for our panelists here. Yeah, floor manager, there is a question there from the gentleman. And then we're gonna have the lady to my left, the gentleman to my right, the first. Uh, thanks so much. You please state your name and the question and to whom is it directed to? I don't have a question, I just would like to do something. Can I ask you to stand up and turn around and face that side? I am used to giving instructions, I was just stand up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, just look there, don't look back. Just be present. The rest of you stand up. I want you to imagine you are back there and all these people have your back. And in that moment you could not see them, but they were all calling for your release. But none of them forgot you for that moment. And in that sense, you present the fact that when we take a stand as human rights activists, we are never alone. There are 56 million people who are slowly beginning to find capacity to protect you. I'm not sure if this is a question, but we have your back. Thank you so much. We have a question uh, from the second row to my left on this other side. The lady in green, I presume. Thank you so much. Um, thank you very much. My name is Yana Kishengo, and just like Irongo, I have no question. And mine is to say thank you. Thank you very much for your sacrifice for what you have done for this country. We really thank you. Nadia, it is from your mind. You did nothing wrong. You did nothing wrong in all the posts you did and what you did on the street. We celebrate you, we honor you. I think in addition to having your back, can we all pledge 
that the torture they went through, in addition to the people who have lost their lives, the firing of cabinet is not enough, is it? For patriots to have sat in a toilet because they demanded good governance, parliament must go. Yes. For all the wrong investments in military guns to silence us, we need a new budget. Not the one that is referring to me, either. a new budget. And finally, if the president could apologize for this, he said they were fake to these people. They are here, we can see them. Does it have to be a president? No. Ruto must? No. Thank you. Thank you for those opinions. I am a round of questions. Okay. Uh, people power. People power. People power. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Brian Okeja. Actually, we, we really don't even need to ask questions. We need to speak our hearts here. What we're dealing with in this country is a kleptomaniac. Yes. Bunch of boss and muscles. Is that what we're dealing with in this country? We're dealing with a government that has a massive respect for rule of law. I can tell you there are just a few of us, but so many people suffered. Myself, I was saying that I, I lost balance, I almost broke my knee. I was covered on the back by, by a room. I was washed, I was washed with that pink water, healing water in my can. What, what they have done is they have arrested our people, they have tortured us and they have killed us. But what they don't know is this that when we made a decision to cut off our houses, we knew that the fight for democracy is very expensive. And we were able, we are ready to pay the ultimate uh, uh, price. We were ready, we knew that we would either come back home safe or not come back at all. But that will not deter us from anything. We will continue. They can kill us, but they cannot kill this movement. They can torture us, but they cannot kill this generation. They can kill us. The worst thing that they can ever do to us is to, is to kill this band of boys and a mass of this body, but they can never touch our soul. We will die, we will incarnate, we will come and be born in this country. We are not going to accept any answers. And what we are saying is this that as a youth of this nation, as the Genesis, our allegiance, our reasons, our left and fidelity is to the flag of this nation. It's the flag of Kenya and to no one else and to nothing else. People of power, say with me, I am, I am a revolutionary. I am, I am, I am a revolutionary. I am a revolutionary. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. Before we continue, I'd like to invite Rocha Mata, who is the student president, to just give his comments. Uh, the mic is there, please, if you could. I'd first like to take this chance to thank the organizers for this event, and I'm very honored. And uh, if I may count on what we underwent when we were going for the demonstrations, we were allowing ourselves through the campus where we were able to organize ourselves and get some masks and water. And what we were mainly taking was students, apart from the finance bill, is mainly the new funding model which has been really affecting us. And even as the, as the president has dissolved this cabinet, we are still saying there's more to be done. I'm not going to complain, simply. Because as we're sitting right now, we can't afford school fees as our students. And what I call for the president to do is uh, he dissolves and he abolishes the new funding model, which is really affecting the need. Because if education is an equalizer, then why then should we segregate and why then should we group students based on how financial they are? Because as are speaking, the first years in medicine school were paying 612,000 shillings. Half of them have deferred from their class. Because they expected to pay that, so that is about 200 shillings. So where I come from, I come from Bali, that is in Zombo. Um, my parents, they sell mangoes for a living. So they really can't afford these school fees and we are getting their dreams. So as we are here, let us also check for that in the X and other avenues that we still change. And this is high time that the of us, let's not kill the movement because the country is still in trouble. And we can say we have won yet. Much has to be done and money to adjust all the comrades that will do this until we get where we are. Because this is our nation and we must fight for our justice. And for all those who are affected, we have been praying for you and I'm sure everything will be well. And uh, for all those few remarks, let me thank you for the event. Uh, have a lovely day. Now, Safari and Ekulu, now we'll take the new funding. Comrades power. Comrades power. We want free education because it's a basic need for all of us. Yeah, so take number Thank you so much, Rocha, for those comments. Please reserve your comments and your questions goes to the engagement and discussions are still ongoing. At this point, I'd like to begin with Nadia. What are your closing remarks? And perhaps the leaders that are watching you today. What is your message to them? We owe it to ourselves and to our fallen comrades to see this thing through to the end. This movement is not about one person, it's about two people, it's about all of us collectively. We need systems that work. We need a country that works for all of us, not just a select few. So, yeah, they can maim us, they can us, they can murder us, but they cannot stop this movement. Mm -hmm. Billy, on your end, the closing remarks to those that are watching, what are you telling them, especially the policymakers, those that are in church? Okay, first of all, I want to thank everyone for all the noises that you made while you were abducted. So, and all I can say is that together we are powerful. The noises that you're making behind our boards, behind our phones, they are powerful. And we are seeing the effects like they're working. So all I can tell all, uh, all the comments, don't give up. Mm -hmm. This thing is working. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. And from your end, your closing remarks and the calls continues. And perhaps what is the way forward from your end? I think there is defiance that comes with knowing that you are doing what is right and knowing that you are fighting and standing for something. Standing at that door after open, seeing eight men armed with military grade weapons, the fear went out of me because I knew I had done nothing wrong and I knew there was nothing I could do. I was helpless, but I was sure that if that was the end, it was for doing nothing wrong. We, the people of Kenya, will continue to do what is right. We will continue to fight for what we deserve, and we will continue to use our brains because our ingenuity is what sets us apart from those who have fought before us. We will not just come at you in the streets. We will use our brains. We will fight you in courts. We will use technology. We will stop you from making this country move in the right direction by whatever means available to us. We are the smartest, we are the strongest, we are the best this country has to offer. Thank you so much, Ernest, for those remarks. Please let's give them a round of applause. It's not easy, and we wish you well, even as you get the psychological help that you need to do to get yourself through uh, the next phases of your life. At this point, I'd like to go to Viani, uh, as we take a very short breather, and then we'll continue the conversation. So keep your questions there, we'll get to them. So at this point, we are going to just take a breather, and then invite Viani on the stage. Thank you so much.
la 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 salama atuko nawe ditukiwa e tapatana mtozi ya gana hewe mungu wajua njia za mungu ya tengeze yale siwezi ya songeze wewe ndiye nguvu ya wange hewe mungu wajua njia za mungu ya tengeze yale siwezi ya songeze wewe ndiye nguvu ya wange atuko nawe ditukiwa awe la 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 salama atuko nawe we Tuki wawe Tatana Machozi ya dana Mungu wabarika santi man Niko tada si ya sikalaka Uweza kumbeza Shagala pagana Niko Hayari Kuli pagarama Sita si mama Ufu ya kitawala Sita si mama Mama ufu ya kitawala Ufisa Yumi na siu kalila Kukusa sura wataki kukusa zea Unuhu Niko fama Sita si mama Mama ufu ya kitawala Sita si mama Mama ufu ya kitawala ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
So I would ask you also just to acknowledge uh, some of the other people that um, have helped put this together. This is a collective effort. There are many organizations that are uh, on the poster, and there are many others that didn't get onto the poster but were in support. Let me acknowledge the International Commission of Jurists, Kenya Section, the Independent Medical U Legal Unit, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, a state agency committed to human rights. And to be honest, that is all they have been doing in the last four weeks. To the Defenders Coalition who have protected and supported all of many of you here and many others, and also lastly to Happy Olal, but also to the movement of social justice centers that were organizing all over the country to protect the protester. Thank you. Comrades, power. Comrades, power. Power to the people. My name is Eric Kakemu I serve you as the LSK chair by Nairobi branch. And I'm truly delighted today to be part of this gathering that I can only describe as a gathering of patriots because for me, we have been brought together by the unfortunate events happening in our country, but maybe not so fortunate because for the first time since independence, we will for once describe the country we want for us. We will for once describe the kind of leadership we want for this country. We will for once reset and even describe who a patriot is because what has been happening is elections in this country have sanitized the worst of criminals and we call them Waheshimiwa. I am so delighted today. 13 years ago, this gentleman, Mr. Julius Owino, a.k.a. Giuliani, sang a song called Bahasha Ya Okambo. I don't know if you remember that song. Oh, 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 should not be an empty rhetoric. It should be that we give opinions. And in the verse, in the first verse of that song, Giuliani makes a statement. Neo to a bit wrong. Pedestrians want to pitch a because they're crossing Kupito. That is the country we've had for the last 13 years, for the last 60 years. But we, the people, must describe the kind of country we want and tell ourselves we will live in a country where the rule of law is supreme. And we are all faithful to the rule of law. And fellow patriots, it starts with all of us being considerate to obey the list of things, including giving regard to zebra crossing, including giving regard to traffic lights. If that is the country we want, we must be part of a change. Ladies and gentlemen, I am truly delighted and even uh, more privileged because I know Madam President will be giving, giving her keynote address, especially on the subject of we, the people. Thank you very much. God bless Kenya. God bless the movement. May we, patriots, fight and never relent in seeking for a better country. Thank you. <laughs> just before Madam President speaks, I have been informed that uh, those who wish to register their comments, the desk is just out there on the left. Madam President, thank you very much, sir. Comrades, power. I'm not feeling that power. Comrades, power. power. Viva. 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 Protect our constitution. Viva. Viva. My fellow Kenyans, comrades, and colleagues, for decades our country has faced endless spate of unresolved extrajudicial killings associated with political spectrum. I remember lots of society was involved in collecting evidence for the last Madame killings. To date, they're still demanding from IPOA. Why haven't you tabled that report? Why haven't you held those policemen accountable? Why is the Inspector General of Police sitting on that chair? We all know about the controversial death of Pio Gamapinto in February 24, 1965. Very few will remember January 29, 1969, where Aguin's death, a pioneering Mau Mau lawyer died in a car crash under mysterious circumstances. The families of Pinto and Aguin have never known justice, and the same fate befell Thomas Joseph Abiyambo Boya on July 5, 1969. Have we forgotten J.M. Karyuki on March 2, 1975, where the truth about Bruce Roy Mackenzie's death on May 24, 1979? We are here today to stand for justice for victims. We do not want to leave any man behind. The stories of those who came before us, the different regimes, the different decades, are testaments that when political stars and fights come to an end, their bodies are littered in the streets, their bodies are left to work in to deal with. Yet no one knows justice, no one sees justice for those victims. I'll go on until cows come home, and you'll all see that each regime in this country has had its fair share of assassinations in an attempt to eliminate persons perceived to be something for something that the political class do not want. Killing of innocent Kenyans on the streets started with Mzee Jomo Kenyatta on the dark Saturday of October 25, 1969, when Jomo's visit to Kisumu turned bloody. We all know how many Kenyans died during the struggle for multi-party democracy under Moe's 24-year rule. Abductions, torture, and painful deaths did not start with this regime. The police have merely inherited the vice from generation to generation. And we're saying, does it stop in this generation? Yes. Does it stop in this generation? Yes. It must end in this generation. No more abductions, no more extrajudicial killings. President Mwaki presided over the worst side of killings. We cannot forget about the 2007 2008 post election violence. And we do not ever want to go back there. Uhuru Kenyatta, too, was no different because every year local newspapers reported how many people disappeared mysteriously in the hands of law enforcement agencies. And just when we thought there was a new dawn in this country, new hope, a country where the head of state was brought in in the mantra for the young people, a youthful leader, we have seen police disappointing this hope. And we are demanding from the head of state that he's promised that there will be no extrajudicial killings in his tenure, in his reign, that he may hold truth to that, at least if for nothing else. Let people not die for standing for their beliefs. Let people not be abducted for standing for what they believe is right. And we are still demanding from him to ensure that all those who have been involved are arrested and prosecuted before our courts of law. The civil societies are struggling to put together the data of injured people, both from gunshots, crude weapons, and attempts to drop on missing persons. We know that their families are still reeling in pain and anguish, and yet we want to move forward. We want to move forward, but we want to move forward with justice for everyone. This family should not be struggling with paying medical bills, struggling with fundraising to bury their kin. Yet we have a state, we have a nation, that the head of the state has committed that they will be held accountable for each and every death, for each and every person who has been injured. I visited people at Kenyatta National Hospital. Young men and women like you who now will never, never walk again, they have lost their hands, where do they start? We cannot move on and forget them. For our nation to grow, we must move on together. And that is what we, the laws that we have Kenya and Colleen and all our partners here today are standing for. We want justice for each and every one of our members in this great country.
Fellow Kenyans, today we want us to begin a journey of truth and justice. Today we walk back the hands of time towards tracing the wealth out of our missing brothers and sisters. Walk with me as we seek justice for our fallen heroes of the leaderless revolution. We are going to ensure that we give our family the hope to wake up every morning knowing that their son or daughter, whose remains are buried in grace, spread throughout this country and not in vain. To that mother, to that aunt, to that sister, to that father, to that brother, looking for their loved ones, please come to us. We have created a network of social and civil rights defenders working together to unravel these mysteries. Let this be the last time that Kenyans will take to the streets in peace, only for trigger happy policemen to flood the streets with their blood and walk spot free. The plan is to set camp at almost every county that experienced police brutality during our protests. I want to raise my greatest appreciation for my different branches all around the country that mobilized their members upon my request and call to go out to the different police stations all around the country. That is why we'll be able to make a mark. Each and every one of my branch chairs, my council members, and every lawyer who heeded my request and call are the heroes that I can see proudly from the law society side coming to defend the rights of Kenyans and fighting against any trumped up charges, those who have been kept beyond the required period in prisons and trying to ensure the safety and freedom of all Kenyans who have been arrested. There are so many people out there living in pain inflicted by police. It could be mental health or just isolation. Please come out. Let our experience team of experts offer psychosocial support to help you heal. Today we begin here at the historic of Fungamano House. We are coming to you all around the country. The Lost Society of Kenya, together with all our partners here, have membership across the country, and with the support of our various branches and offices, have remained zealous and steadfast at protecting the Constitution. If we work together in this, then our defenseless families will not shed tears in vain. As a mother and a lawyer, I stand here today with a heavy heart of what we have seen the last few weeks. The numerous calls that I have received, those in distress, even at very wee hours of the morning. It shows to you the waning strength of so many members of the public. Though in fear, some struggling, some in despair. But yet, our young generation is still coming out strongly and firmly, affirming that we are standing for accountability, transparency, we are fighting corruption, we want to see a positive change in our government. Those who are becoming our loyal patriots of this country, they are standing for to see a change. They are the same James Orangos and amongst others who came to fight for multi-party democracy. This is a fight against corruption, a fight for accountability, a fight for transparency, which we must embrace as a nation to move forward together. Even in commemorating those of us who are no longer among us, it would be remiss of me not to appreciate each and every one of the zealous, ingenious, persistent, and unified sacrifice for our country. You are ridiculed, underestimated, threatened, and vilified, all in an attempt to break your result, to reclaim your country. Through it all, you remain peaceful and focus on the noble objective of standing for what is right and what you deserve. Your, your courage is unparalleled, your patriotism unchallenged, and your unity against all political barriers unprecedented. You are exactly what you think you are. You are heroes of today. <laughs> the individual gains of what you people stand for shines a bright ray of hope upon the future of our country. If you do not believe it yet, allow me to confirm to you that you people have achieved what many dreamed of and wished for, but few realized. <laughs> a weak and unreliable parliament betrayed you, the people who they swore to represent you. Miyanguka now. <laughs> a punitive tax regime was forced on the total Kenyans despite public outcry against the repressive finance bill. Miyanguka now. <laughs> the political elite unified to run Kenya down the rabbit hole of treachery and deceit to deviate you from your result to bring change to Kenya. Namely, <laughs> An ineffective, incompetent, and arrogant cabinet represented impunity and refused to work for the people from whom the power they exercised. And once again, <laughs> today marks a crucial step in our progressive journey towards real sustainable change for our country. This is the onset of a series of deliberations by sovereign citizens of Kenya to reflect on who, where, and what we are as a country. The preamble to our constitution defines who we are. Article 10 prescribes what we ought to be, and the entirety of our constitution in its brilliant magnificence envisions where we ought to be as a nation. However, time without number, those to whom we have restored power and trust to deliver to us the dream of Katiba 2010 have failed us. To me, our party Latini, we to perform. Kenya finds itself in a constitutional moment, one where the people have reclaimed their sovereignty and are ready to read of any individual institutional entity that jeopardizes the well of the country and defies constitutional principles. What started as demonstrations against the financial 2024 has spun into a domino effect that gives us an opportunity for change that is ours to lose. She does it to Zikia Mukabado. Lazima is in one leg. It is thanks to this realization that the Law Society of Kenya, all our partners and stakeholders have taken the obvious step to join all of you in forging the path on which you want our country set. Thank you for embracing us, thank you for allowing us to stand with you, and thank you for allowing us to be part of you. I want to, my speech was quite long, but I want to also highlight that we have seen changes in the police service commission, we've seen so many trainings, but now we're saying we're going to hold you accountable. We're not going to sit and start discussing a way for training better institutions for police. It's time for accountability. It's time that we, those who have been given power and have abused it to be held accountable. That's why we're here to give count everyone and ensure no one is left behind. That when they're challenged that by these people, where were they hurt, which is, we'll be able to table credible evidence as advocates and our different partners that will be able to table, put this at the table. That should be part of the discussion. Any dialogue must start with information and telling us this number of people that have collected this data, what are you doing about it? And we urge you know that IPOA will be coming today, that IPOA may also take responsibility and take that mantle. We will not allow you to continue to fail us as a people of Kenya. You must also take up your place and hold any uh, police officers that have been identified, have been seen. You can't tell us that you cannot find them yet. Our Gen Z's, our millennials, our youth, our fellow Kenyans are able to trace them and to find their details and have shared them with you, but you refuse to do your work. To independent institutions, the judiciary, constitutional commissions, independent officers and statutory bodies, it's high time you stand up to be counted. People have been killed by police, but IPOA is yet to act. People have been outed for corrupt conduct by ESCC is yet to institute relevant proceedings. The helpless feigned by, helplessness feigned by institution is the greatest enabler for the tribulations we face. The hesitation and refusal by proper mandated authorities to take action in the face of subversion of the rule of law and constitutional principles is the reassurance upon which our aggressors act with impunity. Government frustration and refusal to cooperate are in one way, and no way, shape, form, or fashion unacceptable excuse. The people are with you, they will support you, they will help you finish the job, but only if you start doing it and doing it well. <laughs> Lastly, to the political leadership and elected representatives. There is no honor higher than be chosen by the people to serve your country. That honor requires delicate, deliberate, impartial, and comfortable ex exercise of that authority that is donated to you. Who is Andrew Hado? 
advises that have no place in the Kenya of today. The people of Kenya awake to their full authority as a true sovereign. And the realization of the beauty of their unity, those the Kazians on divisive ethnic politics that has historically been endemic in this Kenyan politics. It's time to become leaders, not rulers. It is time to represent themselves the people, not to be demigods desperate for constant praise and worship. It is time to act, not making and yielding promises. Henceforth, content to the people will never go unnoticed, nor remain unresolved. Gen Z Wame? In it Gen Z Wame Goza? <laughs> will not believe, you will not believe. From the low side of Kenya and all our partners, we make our solemn understanding that what we have done over the last few weeks has been filled by the strength we have known from your courage. For as long as we stand for what you believe is just fair and right before the law, we will stand for you and will fight for you. <laughs> Join me in this final prayer, the prayer for our forefathers, the father, the prayer of our nation. We say, we say the first stanza of our national anthem in English. O God, of our creation, bless this our land and nation. Justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. I pray that God bless you and God bless Kenya. Really? Millennials, uh, thank you very much for uh, what you're doing. There is, uh, I mean, Kabarak actually, and there is uh, a joke going around here, which I think we should, uh, should tell you. Uh, apparently, the president is going around looking for a general, general called General Z. <laughs> and this reminds me of Ida being going to the central bank looking for one of the workers who was called foreign exchange, who was never around in Uganda, and they wanted to kill him. So, uh, my comment uh, is that there are two comments that I want to make, uh, and I've made them in uh, other spaces. One is that uh, what happened the other day. Uh, and I think this has been discussed, so I'm just reinforcing what we have always said for a long time, uh, that the factions that rule Kenya cannot be described in the way we describe them as uh, that there's one, you know, faction that is, is the lesser evil, and uh, that we have to choose evil. Uh, they have come together, they've shown that they're, they're bad, so the same political fair, and they have identified themselves as uh, the enemy of the people. Uh, and and that's, that's, that's progress, because we have, we have had for the last 60 years or so, the politics of vision, uh, the politics of monetization, which uh, you must avoid, you know, at all costs. And you have started the revolution. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And uh, we wait and, you know, we hope that you will continue your political demands to emphasize, you know, the concerns of your material interests and needs, education, health, jobs, uh, struggles against foreign domination, uh, housing, everything that uh, is, is, is important for your, you know, existence. Um, you host us. Uh, I've come to those, those, those particular issues uh, in, a, in, a, in a revolutionary manner. I've loved the, you know, the, the codes or the clarion calls, which are called uh, uh, occupations. Um, even the occupation of IMF, you know, and, and World Bank, uh, making that connection between our and our external rulers is, is, is very, very, very important if, if, if we are going to uh, uh, to uh, carry on uh, this uh, revolution through this uh, successful <coughs> change. So, the, 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 I also want to praise you for breathing life into the constitution. You know, we, we have a constitution that, you know, is fairly progressive, uh, but we gave it to, you know, leaders who find it inconvenient and they don't want to implement it, but you've come uh, to the scene, and you're basically saying that we have to exercise uh, so our sovereign power directly, and that's what is reflected in the various uh, uh, calls for occupations, whether it's the occupation of, of parliament, uh, occupation of uh, state house, or occupation of, uh, I guess, the judiciary. Being put, you know, in the calls, to police stations. I'll talk to you about this moment, about what does that moment mean legally, and what is the value of that moment, why do we keep saying it? Thank you so much, uh, Alan, for that. And uh, I would like to say that the Lost Society of Kenya has, that day, it, it, it was a study for us, because that is what happened was uh, we had gone for a memorial for Honorable Monica, who was killed in the hands of the police. And we were called, and we were told, we even had not set up the toll, toll line for people to call advocates, and we were called that there are some advocates who have been arrested, and they are in central police station, and we asked ourselves the question, at the time, and we were still at the test, and we asked ourselves the question, why are we going to release only lawyers, while people who have been peacefully demonstrating have been arrested? And I think we had a discussion with the president, and she said, yes, let's Google them out. And I remember when we went going there, we didn't expect what we, we saw that day. So we went to the police station, and we actually asked some um, to be given the, the list of the people who have been arrested and the charges. And I remember it was a back and forth, back and forth, and now lawyers from certain groups are called, come, let's release these people. And actually, when they saw lawyers there, they, they, they saw us as a threat, because we are going to release the people who have been causing trouble, uh, causing trouble to them. So when we met there, we tried talking, we tried calling the president. 
sentencing just tell your people to go till 6 p.m. And we ask them, why till 6 p.m. Have, has the law been suspended six, till 6 p.m. that we can only release people after 6 p.m. And when we demand, demand that you stay with um, the people who have been arrested in the police station, they threw tear gas at us. I remember even one of our council members also. They threw a uh, what is, uh, canister, the tear gas canister at her. So the lawyers have been really harassed in this whole process. We saw even another day in Nanuki where they had gone to to actually take, because this guy, I think Clarice, was the one to follow him, and they were harassing him, going to his home, money his door, and they said, okay, let's, uh, let's take him to the police station, and when they went, they were all chased away, lawyers were chased away, and were told, you know, we want to speak to Clarice, and they said no, and it became a commotion, and they started beating the lawyers, and chasing them out of the police station, so uh, what does this mean, it is very lawful, especially for what had been happening in the first uh, terms of the demonstration, where people were coming out peacefully, they are just with the water bottles, they are just singing, chanting, and they were not causing any, uh, any kind of fracas, and I think the government had not seen Sahel, I think, they thought everything will be organized, will be uniform, but when they saw large numbers coming, and they were wondering how can we contain these numbers, because they thought it would just be like the normal ones, and I took them, they are at home, or three, so, so I think um, we need to defend constitution, and we are saying peaceful protesters, and that is the case we have seen all through, peaceful protesters are being arrested, and that is what we are standing, uh, standing for, that you can just be arrested for exercising your rights. Right. Yeah. You know, at Kipomis, basically, police patrolling through terrorists, but they were shooting um, live nation of bullets, um, beating up uh, protesters, but most importantly, we also saw police without uniform, um, completely fixed up somehow mingling with the protesters, and the rest shoot and perhaps some of those actions at this moment. I want to ask you about what should the police be doing during the protest, and what it is going to do, just how illegal it is. What can do anything about it, or it's just a matter of what we say about that, something that's really happening before. So the, you guys, in terms of policing that we saw in the, over the last month or so, did not start then. I think we have to go back to 2023, uh, we have to go back to 2017, um, and we have to ask why is it in a point where the state is being challenged on the basis of corruption, on the basis of inequality, on the basis of uh, impunity, um, why does the state respond so violently to these protests? And um, as much as we monitor with the medical association and law society and of organizations here under the auspices of the police working group, and we saw the pattern of policing essentially was to destroy the possibility of these protests. How that starts is commanding officers failing to accept letters of notification. The second thing that happens is you arrest anybody you suspect to be an organizer. Now what is a protest organizer? A protest organizer is also a martial. It is the person who makes sure that when we uh, write a letter to the OCS and we say we are going to move from this point to this point, we are going to and we're going to hand over a petition here. That is the person that controls the crowds. So once you take those two quick actions, you immediately send a protest into confusion. And we have said so many times to commanding officers, to the most senior police officers, that as soon as you disrupt that process, you have thrown a peace protest into something that is not provided for within Article 57. The second stage is to have police officers coming like criminals, uh, either in Batavas or without um, identification, or with people that have five, uh, four or five um, uh, license plates and they themselves. They pretend to be protesters in order to arrest protesters, or they pretend to be journalists in order to arrest journalists, or they take us medical officers. This is what we saw this time, where we set up uh, emergency clinics essentially for um, medics, volunteers, government paid by government, to basically provide treatment not just to protesters but to bystanders and also police officers. Let's not forget. And what happens is you tear gas them, you arrest people like Brandon, you then seize their medical records so that they can't be brought with patients. And the question is for me is actually who is behaving um, as if this is a threat. Who is providing the riotous activity? Who are the criminals that need to be prosecuted? So to end this point, I think there are many things that we need to do. We need to outsource, identify those officers. We need to bring cases against those particular officers individually, try the commanding officers to ensure that they are held accountable, not just for deaths, not just for the injuries that uh, Hussein has spoken about, but even for the violation of the right to protest and the right to expression. The previous panel spoke about the horror of people coming to collect them in the middle of the night. That also needs to be prosecuted. The freedom of expression is what makes us human beings. It is not just the constitution that but you are not a human being if you cannot think independently, if you cannot articulate yourself, and if you cannot take action in order to protect a constitution that we all voted for. Okay, right, so I'll go up to the two points about, and then we sort of uh, actually talk about the people, but the role of the flag, as you brought it up. And my question is this, who owns the Kenyan flag? Uh, let me show you this. Kenyan flag belongs to the people of Kenya. It's not a government uh, uh, item, it's not, it's ours. When you talk of black, it's us, it's the color of our skin. When you talk of red, it's the, it's the bloodshed. And we continue to shed to this moment, to this very day. And it's our land, you know? So I, mean, I find it absurd for anyone to even imagine or to tell us that you can't do this. This is a preserve of a few individuals, only the leaders. These are today's Mawaws. When you are Kufa, we are seated here today, having this conversation here at Fulano in their honor. Because they died so that we can be here today. And one thing I want to communicate is that even with the families that we have been going to, you know, you can see that, you know, that resolve and that pride that they have. When you go with the flag and you're dripping the flag over the coffin, and they say, wow, our son did not die for nothing. He didn't just die like that. He died truly fighting for this country. And when you go to the family and you're handing over the flag, you can actually feel, you know, everyone there holding the mother, the father, the family in pride. So, like the Constitution, you know, you know, anyone we need to hang in other countries, people hang these flowers in their backyards. They're there on their doors. And here we are being told that if you display the flag or if you put it, it's an offense. My foot, I mean, we, we can't have that. Constitution, this is our country. And that is why. That is why we need to reclaim. For me, I'm, I'm a grassroots person, I'm not smart of talker. But you know, everyone, this is the time. I'm gonna keep doing it twenty five years. I mean, you can tell us anything. So not just the flag, everything, even the emblem, we talk about fear, it is yours. So that fear is gone. When we lose our fear, thank you very much. Question. What is this problem with like why do we have these sets of different special security forces and the government that they own this item exclusively as this item, the government product. Well we need to remember it's a symbol of of, of, of this country. And uh, if if it was uh, equal. I think uh, I'd be the first one in this place who should I have used BTS, I have used it uh, as a lesson, not, not necessarily, but showing um, my pictures into this country. We walk around with the bracelets, the Kenyan bracelets, but it has never been a problem. Anyone in the, in the UK, you can identify a Kenyan from, from one when you just see that bracelet. Right now, when we're using it at this time, it becomes a problem. Then I think uh, we are not the problem, they are the problem, and I think they should deal with it. And uh, this is just because uh, we, we have had, we, we see people putting uh, flags on, on their cars. Right now, they're even ashamed of putting those flags in their because we will flag them from Canal. So I think it is not a problem right now. Carrying your flag, it's, it's patriotism. They did it uh, very proudly, and now we are the ones saying, be the people, are taking it proudly, and we are carrying our flags, and let them know that we have the power in our hands. And I think one of them, the symbol is our flag. To get some reactions to because we're doing this uh, on space and for the as well. So we'll go to that to get your content. This is a question of the question about this exciting flag. Yeah. Back to the flag. So in a crisis, all nations have three choices. The first is to twist towards constitutionalism, the second is to twist towards authoritarianism, and then the third choice is anarchy. Now, what this
wants to disenfranchise you, the first thing it will do is it will tell you there are certain symbols of patriotism, of nationhood that do not belong to you. The flag does not belong to you. It is okay. If you don't take a voter's card, or you lose your ID and don't have to get another one, or you don't volunteer in a school clinic, in a school nearby you, or you don't volunteer in a clinic to oversee a public resource that keeps our people safe and dignified. Or you don't volunteer at all. That is what the state tries to do to remove that section of the Constitution that has expressed itself so loud in the last three weeks. And that is Article 1. If you do not Seize this moment, not just as a, I think, some, I think it was the president who spoke about this. If we do not seek this moment, we do not uh, grab this moment as a moment for the third liberation, then we are going to squander this moment more generally. So I would say to those cabinet trees that are waiting, that are lobbying, and perhaps if they follow the same rules, in 2027-22, that are beginning to put money together to buy a cabinet secretary, if they do not come with new ways of working, then consider they have come to replace. Not so. And they are coming essentially not to build on this constitutional movement, but to take a back to a place that we do not want to do. So where you a flag. If it's necessary, have a flag. I have an outfit made from the flag and let's walk around. Underwear, trousers, t shirts, and jackets. Top plate. Uh, let's 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 learn from space. Um, I think Classic is online. Let's have a good time. What's your reflections of the protest? And then I will come to Odyssey after the result. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, um, yes. Yeah, so I really appreciate that we are having this in the same And um, one of the key things that uh, we watch um, clearly is that the has changed. We are no longer in the olden days. I was using that bit uh, on the police and the police are in the law. And um, maybe one of the things that uh, the LSA can be helping us to know because I think the police are using the law, but they don't know the law. Because when you ask the police why they are arresting you, some of them clearly do not. So then the procedure of arresting, whether you're a criminal or a suspect, suspect or something like that, they have it in the head because these guys go um, to, for the training camps to do much of to do a uh, work on how to use buttons to beat up people. But when you ask a police officer uh, to uphold the law when they are arresting you, do they have the knowledge of applying that law? So for me, that has been a question because the problem of this begins at the time of recruitment because you look at even the people that the, the, the recruiters are looking for, then you clearly know that's where the range starts beating us. Me personally, I did very well in Oliver and I wanted to join police, but I was removed from the line because I was told that I needed. Go to university and study. But I needed to become a police officer. I started as a serviceman and then later on be promoted. I did because of my grade in, in form.
Oh, so one of the things that you need to push right now because our voices have been heard, and this is how it's going to be. Can we have anybody? Can we have an end before I want to become a police officer? Can we allow to become a police officer at whatever level? I'm beginning because you have graduated to what F and you do not have jobs and they're doing what I work. So if I, 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 I am there and I want to become a police officer, allow me to join the forces. Because one of the things that you are battling with is some of the guys that are, I'm saying that you squad less in football now, friends. But clearly, the most of the people who meet the police and they're arresting you, you can clearly tell that they don't even have the, 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 the ability to engage with you and tell you how they're arresting you. They just come using muscles and power. So when I, I think the police do not have the knowledge of the same knowledge, they follow, they follow only commands that they are given. So you say you're doing a piece of demonstration at 47 and you're not displaying any property. Is that police officer who's arresting you aware that there's such a 47 in the constitution? Because that is where the begins at beating us. Can we have the law out of the, the, the law trained at the police officers who enforce the law? And then at least I want to think at least be done, be done the open and public should be notified because they have having abductions and police are taking people from the streets and their homes. Can we have if you arrest me, please allow me to notify my family members that you are arresting me and where are you taking me? So um I think on the police thing, I think the failure of the police has at least we are equipping them and it also uh, continues because of the curriculum uh, they use to train police officers. And then when I come on the continent thing the flag is, is a national or national symbol. The same way we see national anthems. Uh, I have a national anthem on my phone as a ringtone. Why am I not question? It's, it's the position I think is like that when I say national symbol, it says the color of the national anthem, the flag. It is for choosing for me to put on an example. It's saying I can't even do another way of showing um, the national flag. It is the love of my country and the symbols that represent my country. So I think on the flag thing, um, it is an intrusion. We can use the flag in whatever way as long as not it's saying we're just using it to show the love of the country. Thank you very much. I'd like to hand over the microphone to what person is now here. Uh, Silver and Gatti. Uh, Silver, if you can take one minute and give us your reflection as well. Let's see how Silver. All right, meanwhile, let me just give the testimony here. If I can say your name, stand uh, Say your name and tell us what your questions are. Thank you very much. Uh, Comrade Power. power. I want us to do it a little differently. When I say people power, you say our power. People power? Our power. People power? Our power. Our power. People power. I want to make quick reflections. My name is Musila John Muisio, and I coordinate a social movement. This is the activist movement. But I'm equally a member of the PBR Social Justice Center. And there's a panel that came just before you, and these guys were speaking, they are Billy, Nadia, and the other. And what they did before was to be on social media. They just used to tweet on, on things that please them. And for the first time on social media, attracted problems to them that were abducted all that. And I wanted to ask them a question, like I still need to ask a question to them. Would they have seen themselves in a state that they've seen themselves or found themselves now? And the obvious answer would have been no. If it were me or Abiola and a few others being arrested today, would not be as scared to us because we've been on the street a number of times, some of us have been arrested and all that. What has really happened with this movement is to define what human rights defense is. This is not a career. Human rights defense is everyone's quality and activism and one service, one kind of activity for the government. And so when I see young people, every day, every social media has to be condemned from the government. I'm sorry, let it go, it's not allowed. A few who are trying to defend themselves. But before I sit down, I want to make a last reflection. We've seen just the other day that the opposition joined the president trying to protect interests. In 1975, before the election was killed, the American president, Kenya, became part of 10 million years and 10 million years. Now today, the peers have united against 10 million years of this country. And what they are saying, enough of you to advantage us. I'm sorry, they should be very different than us. So I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to
I mean, that is what we give the president to uphold. That is his custodianship in terms of mandates when you are president. So um, I think we have to do away with fails, with that kind of, you know, um, self-aggrandizement, uh, idolatry somewhat. Because it also, you know, give you a notification, you've seen this image. And instead of seeing the constitution, instead of seeing all the, the rules that we won't govern ourselves as a society, we see person. And so one of the things that we would see is personal national government, the offices, 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 and we, I mean, when I think about things, I'm just like, this country is a beautiful country. We have, with everything that's happened, we are here. We are regional power, we are respected, and we need to move forward from that. But we are not stuck, because there's no accountable government in every agency of government, Paris, people, sagas, you know, and we are, our priorities are just simply upside down, and our foreign policy is dictated not by us, but by others. And I'm like, we cannot continue that. We don't want to be the princes that have been ruled by fools. I've worked government for many years. Merit is secondary potentially to networks and connections. You cannot be in the system of the insight, right? I was in government for many years. You cannot climb. In all those years, I never saw a budget. We were never told a budget. You won't prepare for results, which is a planning results process, or when you're going to contracting. And so it's hard to find a reason for employment, you're going to be a result, you know, there's no result, right? So um, I think the ideology should be accountable governance, and the and human justice, and we want independent investigations. Many forensics say against interest. Forensic. Who is in charge of against money in this country? You can't have a potential perpetrator. Be the same person as the investigator. And right now, the National Forensic Lab is in the hand of the National Research. They cannot investigate and conduct the evidence. So half the evidence is with families, and they're here, you know, outside the system, and half the evidence is inside the system. Have to make happy on space and media and have what is that? Um, that was just the conference because I was just here. I know if you make your own We Okay, so I'm going to have to search in the book. I've set to be in the book. So, in general, I encourage everyone to, to remember the constitution to continue to make to a very effective power country. Uh, all of this is not necessarily from hard work and a meritocracy itself. So, Gen Z are trying to say we are putting in all the to get what we're now seeing people working for the line and things that we found even. And I just want to talk about the power of social media as well. Who wants to have any kids every time? Personally, when I step in the and during the holidays, we go to Canada. And the other thing, they're going to be poetry at lunch. And most people are going to be poets. If I do small poetry, I have guys leave them. What this book about is social injustices. It meant that the time wasn't there. It's the first journey. We have begun a journey going to poetry at lunch. You're listening to people talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. These are the people that say, now you can come to this now we can tell you about it. I get tweeted and say, guys, and this case needs to be held accountable. We can say, Prisk was given um, the license called Letter to Behavior. Almost public participation. Has it happened? We are the ones who pay for this. But that is another conversation that has been held for so long. That's the parties before me found a problem there. I have come, I have found a problem there. And I am not going to leave. You know, because other than this time, it's going to be on the dancing stage, as I'm dancing right now. So it is as I said, it's accountable governance. We have to hold each and every person accountable. Kill them. Now, today is the way that you are. I'm at the beginning of the position. I'm seeing the work of the We've seen the likes of Karinam, more socialite rather than Linda. There are so many deserving women. I'm sorry to say that. It's very good, but it's true. There are so many deserving women who are intellectual, who are smart, who need to know your personal life. What have you done for the culture? For the longest time, women have fought. You give a position that all you can talk about is your personal life. She really needs to check herself. Yes. Right. <laughs> If it ends with the politics and the success, it would be too high to think this focus will be focused on the This one fantastic belt, okay, that's going to happen. They're going to rely on the business, which is always has to be for the next three years. From my research, uh, those issues are being solved. I mean, I'm serious, you know, I'm not traditional, you know, two-step budget will not be able to affect it. The main thing we're going to do is we just don't want to have. Give us advice. How should we look at these questions that we have to mind and see we should have priorities, bear in mind, and go for purpose, because we have that. This is a while, that's very good. So, the first thing we appreciate is that the country has changed. It's not business as usual. So, there's been a shift in the mind of opinions, whether they say it or not, whether they organize it or not, it's business, and perhaps it's moment. So, where do I come from? We come from Venus. We'll see today. We'll see today. We're talking about. But what happens? What follows? What is it? What is it? The Volga. That's the problem. Our politics, our governance is transactional. The minute I give you a photo, a handball, a handball, I'm done. We don't do this thing. So this shift has to be literal. Like, we can't talk about this. We have to live. We have to talk. We have to work it. The fact of the matter is, politicians are smart. They are the ones that are educated, astute smart. So what's trending in Japanese? And if we decided that going forward, we're serious about our governance. We're serious about who gets to office. How the hell does somebody get elected? Where are they in jail? How do you get elected? Touching somebody. Dead. And this year, I've got a notice that I'm for you. Get elected. So what Nadia, what my what other artists and individuals and human rights are doing needs to be amplified. Take education very clearly. Because the people who think that there's going to be a kiss of Kamala in Western Europe, his people, that's not doing it. 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 That's is born. So keep at it and keep agitating for the very things that are actually governance, uh, accountability, transparency, right from the elected position. Elected is not young people. Um, you get elected by one party. Yeah. But remember, if our institutions are control meetings, these institutions are not divided. Today, our institutions are failing us because they are master executive. Why? Because executive is the last priority. So everybody who is in position, position of governance, or position of representation, is swallowed by the system. We've got the system. We get there and give them the fact that we get the allowance. Yeah. Yeah. allowance. Everything. Go to the bank. And I think that's why you got the first place. So let's fight for our institutions. Let's get our institutions back. Let's make sure anybody who is in position is a great right person and can always pass the stability test. That's six. Remember, many of you don't have access to those. Uh, so we talk about the control meetings. Uh, bill. That's right. That bill. It's not that you don't have laws that can take over interest. What you have is direct missteps and application of the law. So the implication of these laws is important. That's why we need to go forward to the higher
uh, I'm speaking about a person um, that, uh, according to how things are right now, we understand that uh, the government is formed by the arms, I think, not the arms of the government, but things are now, so like, uh, the government and uh, the executive have money, so we don't have oversight, um, the legislature, okay, if, okay, so people, uh, the MPs are supposed to represent the people who are going to go there and uh, do the legislation, but even if they do the legislation, it's referring to the uh, own system, everything they are doing is about them, so I was asking, uh, I'm not, like, I'm speaking about a person, so, just, just for me, if I tell them, I'm not going to anymore, are they a person, I'm not one, I'm going to say, closer, closer, number two, we say the people will exercise their, their, their right, their ability, or the right, 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 the micro, I'm saying micro uh, the exact micro other, the two, trying to micro to answer the government. How do we get something to this? Okay, thank you, Ivan. Just a quick question. Um, I'm going to try to remember quickly. This idea that you're actually going to be with no best, in fact, we're going to be and what you want. I think so that's on this side of the best. It is literally so everyone that you guys have no points whatsoever. We know this and we will do what you want. How do we stop that from ever happening again? That's possible to get elected. That will stop us, not spoil us. Um, I think we, it goes back to the same thing on public decision because uh, what happens is that we have to accept that when we elect under, we expect the government to be able to So the issue of the elected party or individual, you don't have to believe, you don't have to believe, you don't have to believe, you don't have to believe. So that's why some of the decisions are very tell us, it's not you, it's the party, it's not the party. So the first thing is, because um, we're not calling MP until the last four years, um, is just to keep a record of it, I guess. Because now, okay, the question that you can't call before, as I said earlier, but the fact is that the way we have seen participation being carried out, the creation of ChatGPT, breaking down the information, that's the first thing, breaking down the information, ensuring that you online, it's easier now to try to bring people together before you have to be in mind to do this thing, so it's much easier. Yeah. Yeah. How do the politicians work? How do we stop the arrogance, the community that they have, because now, they're going to have it. The message has already been sent, and I, I, what I'm very happy to see is now, legislators now are uh, being very patient about what they're what they're doing. Um, uh, so the second one is that what she just said itself, the way we can just keep our legislators, number one, is just, you don't get to roll in the moment. So when you go in the moment, you have to, you know, sign in. And so we need to be very well in high school, you know, you sign in the roll